Hi, I'm Michael Moss, and my show here at the Matarango Museum is all about the answer to two questions. The second question everyone wants to know. The first question is one that I asked years ago when I first started my career. Uh, before that, I had been a bicycle racer in France, a meat cutter in Chicago, a, a, a insurance salesman in Newport Beach, you know, all different kinds of things. So when I decided to become an artist, I asked people who I thought knew of something about it, what's the most important piece of advice you can give me? And what I heard over and over again was pick a subject, a theme, and get really deeply into it. And so that's what I did. I picked um, botanicals, flowers, cactus, succulents. I, uh, the next three years, I just did dozens and dozens and dozens of different kinds. And also, if there was a particular specimen I really liked, I do multiple versions of it. And in fact, this particular white rose I really liked. I don't remember how many I did, but I do remember that one gallery sold 15 versions of it. Uh, another gallery from another gallery, one particular collector bought nine different versions of it. Uh, some people would buy two or three of them. And it worked really well because not only did I become kind of an expert in doing flowers, uh, but also it gave the public a way to uh, identify me and recognize me. So it worked for me, it worked for the galleries, the collectors were happy. Uh, and after, uh, after a few years of doing this, I, I started really getting interested in kind of the, the center part of the flower or, or plant, certain areas of it, and the painting started getting a little bit more abstract. I happened to pick one particular yellow rose and I got very interested in the very center of it. And uh, also I was thinking about a, a little more imagination, kind of with the rest of it, not so botanically correct, a little bit more imagination. And I started getting into things kind of like this, a little bit more going on the very center part and what's going on in there. And, and what if I simplified it so much so that it's really all about two different elements? And it became sort of a, a yin-yang kind of a thing. Maybe a little bit of elements on the outside, but real focused on the middle. And pretty soon it was one shape against another, um, maybe nestled together really tightly, maybe kind of stretched out. But the idea of just what happens when you have one shape against another and playing with that, and that really sent me off on what I've been most focused on for the last 16, 17, 18 years. And as I got really interested in the idea of one shape against another shape, I started doing variations of those same two shapes next to each other. I was working on my studio one day on a painting that was shaped like this, just one shape against another. And then I also had one that was the mirror image flipped. And then I had another one that was flipped upside down from that and upside down from the other. And as these are on the table, another artist walked in and immediately bumped them up against each other and started rearranging them and making different patterns. And at first I said, no, wait, you're not supposed to do that. They're individual paintings. But then I saw what he was doing and it was so fun that I decided, you know, I had something there. And I started uh, using that idea to make compositions, first of just four, on the eight, 16, 32, 64, I think one composition I did, I had over 1,400 of these different shapes in the same composition. And also as I was thinking about how many shapes went into a painting, I started thinking about the size of the painting. What happens when the painting grows from two feet wide to four feet wide, eight feet wide, 12 feet wide? And then a few years ago, I met a graffiti artist and I got really interested in the materials he was using uh, for the kind of uh, things you see on the side of buildings or on the side of the freeways. And I started using those graffiti paints uh, along with the techniques I had been using and integrating them into my paintings. And really everything I've done since then, a couple of hundred paintings at least, uh, have grown out of that experiment with graffiti paints. And from here, who knows what comes next?